In this video, we're going to talk about how to write a formula for an ionic compound. An ionic compound forms when metals, which are these elements over here on the left, are going to combine with nonmetals, which are these elements here on the right, to form a compound. And what happens is the metal, for example, magnesium, is going to turn into an ion. And so magnesium's in group two, it's going to turn into a two plus ion. And a nonmetal like sulfur right here will turn into an anion, which is an ion with a minus charge. So we get the sulfide ion. And those are going to react together. Those charges are going to balance and attract to each other. And we're going to end up with an ionic compound. And in this case, we'll get magnesium sulfide. So what are we going to learn in this video? Well, first we're going to learn how to write the formulas when we're given the name of an ionic compound. And then we're going to learn a shortcut to do this quicker. So let's start by looking at a few formulas with the names so we can see how this works. So in these examples, we could see that we have a, a name that includes both the cation, that's the first element, that's the one with the positive charge, and an anion, that's the second element, that's the one with the negative charge. And so we have the formula over here, sodium chloride. Over here, we could see potassium and oxygen. And notice that there's two potassiums. And we're going to try to figure out how do those numbers come into play? Where do we get those numbers? Same thing down here. You can see calcium chloride. We had to have two chlorides make this compound with that calcium. And so why do we do that? We can follow these three steps in order to write these chemical formula for these compounds. First step is that we're going to write the symbols and charges of the ions that are making up the compound. The second step is to balance those charges out. We need the positive and negative charges to be equal to each other. And so we can add more ions in order to get up with, uh, with that balancing of the charges. And then the third step is to just write the formula with subscripts that are going to identify how many of each ion we need. And so let's look at a few examples here. First example here, we have magnesium chloride. And the first thing we're going to want to do is look at a periodic table so that we can identify the symbols and charges for these two ions. Here's magnesium. It's a group two metal, which means it's going to have a positive two charge when it forms an ion. So we're going to have magnesium two plus. And then over here is chloride. It's a group seven nonmetal. And everything in group seven is going to form an anion with a negative charge. So now that I know the symbol and charges, I can go back here to my example. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write in those symbols and charges. And then we can start trying to balance these out. So I have magnesium with a two plus and chloride with a minus one. That second step is we're going to add more ions to balance these charges out. And what I'm trying to do is get the positive side to be equal to the negative side. I have two plus and just minus one. If you don't see anything there, that just means a one. And so I'm going to add in another chloride ion. And if I add up this column by adding the charges here, that's going to give me a total of two minus. Over on this side, I only have one magnesium, and that's a total of two plus. And so those are balanced. And now I can go ahead and write in the formula by writing the number of each element or ion that I needed. Just needed one magnesium. We don't actually write the subscript one in there when we only have one. We just leave it blank. That means one. And then we could put chloride and we put a two to indicate that we needed two of them. And that's going to be our chemical formula. Here's another example, potassium sulfate. We can once again find potassium on periodic table right there. And everything in that first column is going to have a positive one charge. And then sulfate, we don't see on the periodic table because sulfate is a polyatomic ion. And there's a whole list of polyatomic ions that you most likely are going to have to learn for your chemistry class. And you may have to memorize these. Other times you might just be able to look them up on a table. And so we're going to look them up on a table in this video. So here's the table of common polyatomic ions. And there is sulfate right there. And so sulfate is an ion with uh, one sulfur and four oxygens and then a two minus charge. And so this whole thing right here is sulfate. This comes as a unit and then that is the charge of this whole group of things right here. So now to balance this out, we need to add in another potassium in order to get that total positive charge to two plus since the charge on sulfate is two minus that gets those to balance. 
and we end up with two potassium ions and one sulfate ion, and that is our formula for potassium sulfate. We'll try one more example, and in this example, I'll show you a shortcut. So first thing to do is find aluminum on the periodic table. So we'll go back up here to our periodic table, and aluminum is a group three metal, and we could find that right here, there's aluminum. And so that's gonna have a three plus charge. And so we'll go ahead and write that into our example here. And then carbonate is not on the periodic table because it is one of our polyatomic ions. And that's way up here at the top here. And that's CO3 with a two minus charge. Our next step is to try to balance these charges out. So what we're doing really when we try to balance these out is we're trying to look for a number that is a common multiple of these. And the lowest common multiple would be a six. To get six on the positive side, we would need to have two aluminum ions because three plus three would be six plus. And then we would need to have three of these carbonate ions because if we add up all those minus charges, two minus plus, two minus plus, two minus, we end up with six minus and that balances those charges out. And then we can write this as aluminum with a two, so Al2, and then we have three carbonates. Now, if I went and put a three right there after the carbonate, we see we're gonna get a pretty weird looking formula where we'd have two aluminums, one carbon, and then 33 oxygens. So anytime we wanna show that there's more than one polyatomic ion, one of these groups of ion, uh, elements, we have to put that into parentheses like this, and then we put the number on the outside. That says that there's three of anything inside of those brackets. We're saying there's three carbonates. And so polyatomic ions, if there's more than one, we gotta put them inside parentheses just like this. Now there is a shortcut. And so what we do for the shortcut is we take our two ions with the charges. And what we can do is we could take these numbers right here and we can cross them and bring them down to the bottom and they become the subscripts. And this works almost every time. And so the two comes down and gets written down here with the aluminum, the three comes down and gets written down here with the carbonate. And then we get rid of those charges, those symbols. And so we can rewrite this as Al2CO3, put it in parentheses, and then that three comes in uh, that was up here. And so that's a little shortcut you can use that almost works every time. And so in this video, we learned how to write the formula when we're given the name for an ionic compound. And we learned the shortcut where we can cross those charges and determine the subscripts really quickly. Thanks for watching. You can support the Science Classroom by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. You can also support us on Patreon by clicking the link in the video or in the description.